Questions 36 to 41 in the Acer Green Paper. Question 36. The best of falling estimates of the time that the runner took to run the final 50 meters is. So the we're essentially trying to figure out how long it took the runner to run from about here to here. So about 50 meters to that 100 meter finish line. So you'll notice that the runner basically ran that that whole distance, those final 50 meters, at about a constant speed of 12 meters a second. So if we assume that the velocity is about equal to 12, then we can uh, figure out the time. So S is the symbol for distance in this case. So if, if we try to figure out the distance traveled, well, that's always equal to uh, velocity times time. So in this case, the time taken to travel uh, 50 meters is going to be equal to 50 on uh, V, which in this case is 12. So 50 on 12, well, that's about equal to 4.2. Crucially, you've got to remember that the runner, if you look at figure one, is sort of slowing down a bit towards the end. So he's not quite getting to 12 meters a second in velocity over those final say 30 or so meters so in actual fact our runner is going to be running a little bit slower than this 4.2 seconds because this 4.2 seconds assumes that the runner is traveling at a constant 12 meters a second but that's not true because at the end he's running a little bit slower than that so we'd expect our actual time taken to run the final 50 meters to be a little bit over 4.2 so therefore 4.3 is the correct answer so therefore b is the correct answer so question 37 is a simple case of matching up the right formula with the information provided. So we have a runner who's traveled 15 meters and we're asked to find the average, average acceleration over those 15 meters. So if we look at the graph for a distance of 15 meters, our velocity, our V final velocity is going to be equal to 9. So U is equal to our initial velocity and that's going to be 0 because he's at rest at the start and s is the distance that we've traveled in which case in this sorry in this case it is 15. so overall if we just sub that into the equation well and you work through the answers um you'll eventually get an answer that whereby the acceleration is about equal to 2.5 meters a second squared so d is the correct answer for question 37. Question 38, the graph uh, that best represents the distance versus time for this runner is. So the most important thing to realize is that the distance versus time graph has a gradient that is equal to the velocity. So in a distance versus time graph, the gradient is equal to the velocity. So therefore, the steeper the gradient, the greater the velocity. So let's have a look at figure one, so our initial graph. Our velocity is initially quite low. So at the beginning over those first 20 to 30 meters or so, where our velocity is constantly increasing, but at zero, it's very low. So what we'd expect therefore in our distance versus time graph is that at the beginning, the gradient is very small. So it's quite horizontal initially to start off. Now, if we go through each of the answers, A, B, C, and D, you'll find that that actually pretty much selects for the correct answer. So um, if we look at A, well, that sort of fits our, our mold because at the start, it's not too steep and it slowly increases towards the M. Uh, B, well, B definitely doesn't suit the uh, sort of well, what we basically just covered because the initial velocity slash gradient is quite steep so therefore very high and we know that's not true we know that it doesn't actually slow down uh, that much or that dramatically in the middle of his run so uh, we're looking at sort of ruling out B because it's just way too fast at the beginning D uh, sorry C C again is quite promising we've got quite a horizontal gradient at the beginning so we can sort of rule that in and D well D is like B way too steep at the beginning um, it's inferring that we have quite a high velocity at the start of the race so B and D we can rule out we're left with A and C so in figure one uh, towards the middle slash later stages of the race 
we basically are running at a pretty constant 12 meters a second. So we'd expect our gradient to be quite steady. We're not really increasing or accelerating at all. So let's try to compare A and C with that sort of information. So A has unfortunately this little um, sort of increase in gradient around the six, uh, six to eight second mark. And that would suggest that we're basically accelerating in that time period because our velocity is going up uh, in that uh, six to eight second mark. But we know that's not true in that later half of the race, uh, our, our runner is basically running at a pretty constant uh, velocity. So we can therefore rule out A, leaving us with C. And C, um, with just a check, well, yes, it has that constant um, steady gradient slash velocity throughout that later half of the race. So C is the only correct answer for question 38. For question 39, the best of the following essence of the time that the runner took for the, to run the first 20 meters is, well, we can actually use that answer from uh, question 38, our graph number C. Well, that illustrates the, uh, sorry, the time that it takes to run a certain distance. So if we match up the 20 meter line with the graph, we'll see that it took him about 3.6 seconds to run those 20 meters. So therefore using the graph from 38, um, we can answer 39 and the correct answer is C, 3.6 seconds. Question 40 is fairly similar to 39 that we can just use the graph from 38. So we're asked to find the distance that the runner traveled in the first five seconds. And if you look at the graph in uh, 38, the one lettered C, well that is 40 meters. So therefore the correct answer for question 40 is B. So question 41 is a bit complicated. We basically have to integrate a lot of information that we've got gathered sort of over the course of the of the series of questions and use them all at once. So let's have a go um, and try and get the right answer. So first off, we know that the runner ran 200 meters in a straight line in 19.5 seconds. For the first 100 meters, velocity changed with distance as shown in figure one. So first off, we know that the first 100 meters is as shown in figure one. So therefore he ran um, one, the first 100 meters in 10 seconds because that was told to us in the initial line in the stem. So therefore, if he traveled uh, the first 100 meters in 10 seconds, the second 100 meters, he's gonna travel in 9.5 seconds because he travels 19.5 seconds in total. So we know our T is equal to 9.5. The distance that he is traveling in that final one, uh, final 100 meters is well 100 meters and uh, our initial velocity over those final 100 meters is going to equal to 11.4 uh, meters a second or 11.5 depending on what you uh, are going to round it to so that's found by just looking at the final the uh, velocity at 100 meters in figure one so that velocity is going to be our starting velocity for the second 100 meters so we're looking for the final velocity of that of those second of that sorry second 100 meters uh, given that we have a constant acceleration so there's a couple ways to find that using the rules the what, first way is we could use the rules given to us in the stem so uh, using two of those three rules we could definitely find the answer but that's a little bit slow because um, we sort of have to go about and use two formulas as opposed to this single formula if you're familiar with the uh, motion rules such laws, this should be fairly um, uh, familiar to you. Uh, S equal to half times uh, the initial velocity t plus the final velocity times time. So if we sub in all of these values that we found before into our equation, well, what we get is 100 is equal to half uh, brackets 11.4 plus the final velocity times 9.5 and if we just sort of go through all of that what we get is a final velocity of 9.6 meters a second so the correct answer is therefore c for question 41